In this video we will look at the first steps in getting started with Seesaw. It is strongly advised that schools familiarise themselves with the platform's GDPR and privacy policies before getting started. To get started with Seesaw, visit the website web.seesaw.me. Click on Sign Up Free, click I'm a Teacher, and enter your details in the boxes provided. If you already have a school Google account, you can use this account to sign up. It's very important that you use your school email address and not your personal address when signing up for Seesaw. Click on Create Teacher Account. You need to agree to the Terms of Service and the Privacy Policy. You also need to agree to obtain parental consent before using Seesaw with students. By clicking on Learn More, you can gain access to a letter which you can adapt to suit your own school context. Click on Continue. The first step is to name your class. Choose your grade level and click the green tick in the corner. On the right hand side, you can see the class that you've already set up. We'll come back to that in a moment. On the left hand side, you can see your name and this is where you change the settings for you as a teacher. So we'll click here. You can see the class that I've created. And here by clicking on the cog, I can have a look at the account settings associated with my profile. Here you can change your display name. So here you put in the name that you want your pupils to know you by. You can change your icon as well by clicking here, using the camera to take a photograph using your webcam, or you can upload an image that you've already taken. Here you can change your password, and here you can choose to be in the school directory or not. CISO Plus is an option that's available for a free trial for up to 30 days. We would recommend holding off on trying this out until it's necessary, for example, in the case of a school closure or a class closure. You can also set up your notifications here. Some teachers may prefer to receive an email notification each time a student submits something to their seesaw, or you may prefer to turn that off and choose your own time to go and view the children's work on seesaw. The same is true of iOS or Android push notifications. That's if you'd like notifications to appear on your mobile device. And here you can choose whether you'd like to be updated by seesaw with tips and tricks and updates by email. Click on X to return to the settings. Down here, you can select the school that you teach in. Click on find your school. And here you can start to type the name of your own school. If you're the first teacher in the school, you may have to enter details of the school yourself. If somebody in your school has already used Seesaw, you should be able to find your school name and join them in the same school. For example, here I can see colleagues of mine have already set up PDST school. Over to the right hand side of the page, we can see the class that we set up. At the moment, there's only a sample student in my class, so I'd like to add some students to my class. I can do this by clicking on this button down here with plus students. I'm going to ask my pupils to sign into Seesaw using a code and not using a Google account or an email address. Most schools will be using shared devices and if children are working from home, the likelihood is that they'll also be working from a shared device, so click shared devices. Here I can add students individually or I can paste a list of student names if I have one to hand. Click on the green tick and again. We can ignore this at the moment because this would be used if the children were only working in school. However, there are home learning codes available, which I will talk about shortly. So X out of that. The next thing to do then is to click on the wrench here and have a look at the settings for my class. Here I can change the name of my class if I choose to do so at a later date. I can also change the grade level. Here I can manage teachers. With the free version of Seesaw, I can add one co-teacher to my class. In order to do so, I simply add that teacher's work email address here and click on Invite Teacher. 
they'll receive an email which will generate a link allowing them to join the class. That teacher will have the same permissions as the main teacher. For example, teachers you invite will be able to approve items, invite and approve parents and edit or delete items. There is a limit of two teachers on the free version of Seesaw. If you are interested in having more than two teachers attending to the same class, you will need to upgrade to Seesaw Plus. I can change the appearance of Seesaw. It is now set to blue. I can click here and change it to a different color if I desire. I can also change the class icon. So I can use any of the pictures that are provided here, or I can upload an image of an icon that means something to the class. Here you can change the mode in which students sign in. We currently have it set to a class code for shared devices. I can add further students here by managing, clicking on manage students. So here I can see my students. I can add further students if necessary. Student likes and comments can be turned on or off. I would recommend turning it off. Students can see each other work. This should also be turned off because it ensures that the children can then only see their own work and they won't have access to any other children's journals. New items require approval should be left on. It means that you as a teacher won't miss any items that have been submitted. They basically need you to review them before they can be submitted to the journal. Item editing can be turned on or off. Students can tag each other with this though, so it is advisable to maybe turn it off initially before a conversation is held. Leaving sample student turned on means that you can try out activities and see what that activity would look like for your pupils before sending the activity out to the children. Family access can be turned on or left off depending on the views of the school. It's probably a good idea to take a school-wide decision on this. Clicking on means that you can invite families, you can add and remove families, and you can turn on likes, comments and sharing. Again, something that's probably best decided at a whole school level. If the school does decide to enable family access, families will access their child's journal using a separate app called Seesaw for Families. This means that they can view their children's work, they can like, comment or share it if you choose to turn those features on or you can leave them off. Setting up folders is a good idea as it encourages the children to think about filing their work. Click on create a folder. Each folder can have a different color and you can name each folder as you choose. Click on the green tick to add. Clicking on this means that students and teachers will be prompted to add their work to a particular folder each time. Skills are available to the upgraded Seesaw versions, so I will not discuss those at this time. We would advise not saving to camera roll. This means that children's work will be stored in the app under their name and not visible to other users of the shared device. Back on the main Seesaw screen, you will see a button that says Get Home Learning Codes. When students sign into the Seesaw class app or the website using their home learning code, they can complete activities, view their journal and view announcements. They will not be able to see other students' work. These codes should be treated like passwords and stored securely. By clicking on print codes, you'll generate a set of student sign-in codes. There are instructions printed for teachers, tips for home learning, and advice on how children should use their home learning code. Each child will then have a sheet of paper showing them how to log on to Seesaw at home using their home learning code. They will have a unique code to themselves which will allow them to log in to Seesaw at home and in school. We would advise that these are printed out and placed in the children's journal. It's a good idea as well to allow the children a chance to use these codes in the coming weeks in school so that they know how they work. Children would open the Seesaw app, select I'm a student and scan their QR code. As you can see, each child has their own individual code. Further information is available on the PDST distance learning website and on the YouTube channel.